Hey friends, in order to do this homework, it's going to be probably vital that you watch this because it will be very helpful. So I gave you a sheet in class that looks a lot like this. And the general idea is that a student was growing bacteria to see how different antibiotics affect its growth. Now normally if you have a petri dish like this and, and inoculate it, which means you put bacteria in it, it will grow in a solid, kind of almost like a lawn of grass. Now what's different here is that you'll notice that there's these little dots and these actually would represent filter paper that had different types of antibiotics in them. And depending on how well they work, you notice nothing's growing there. And here's another picture down here. This would kind of represent um, how the antibiotics are actually killing the bacteria, at least preventing it from growing. And so the bigger the circle, the better the antibiotics work. So this one didn't do hardly anything. This one did much better the general idea. And here's some other examples or pictures of how that might work. Now, the way you can measure this actually would be to measure the area of how much area was, uh, was not growing. So here you can see this bacteria is growing here, but in these little circles here. You notice I'm kind of carrying a circle over there. That would be what's called a ring of inhibition. And so the data that you see is based on this little storyline where they actually tested these four different types of antibiotics here, streptomycin, moxicillin, ampicillin, etc. <clears throat> and then down here is the actual data. Those kind of split up a little bit here. So what I did is I shared this, this with you, which you have a hard copy of. I also shared this document, which actually has the exact same information here. And of course, by putting on a Google Doc like this in the spreadsheet, you can now work with it. Now, keeping in mind that these represent diameters. And I'm just going to write that in there. These represent diameters of the circle. I want you to make a graph that shows the relationship between how well the antibiotics work um, based on area. So f we have to do a little manipulation here. So there was two petri dishes. Each had five discs in it, which therefore that add up to ten. And so probably what you might want to do is get the average. You might recall that in order to get the average, you add them all up, divide by the number, in this case 10. But of course, using a spreadsheet, it's much easier. So what I will do here is type in average. Try my best to type this in. Average diameter. I'll put my glasses on so it'll make it a lot easier. So here's average diameter. And of course, when you put in information, you can make a formula. So I put in equal sign. And what's actually pretty easy on here, if I go up to my different functions, this is one that's used a lot. If I just click average, it already types it out for me. And all I have to do is highlight this column, if that's a column I'm doing. Now clearly, the average of 0, all zeros, is going to be 0. And I'm going to uh, just make it look a little fancier in the center here. But remember, what you can do is you can copy and paste. So now I have the average of streptomycin, the average of amoxicillin, and all the way down the line. Now you might recall that the area of a circle is pi r squared, and radius is the r. So I'm going to put in radius there. Um, and how do we get the radius? Well, we divide the diameter by 2. So right here, I'm going to say, OK, let's divide 0. Actually, I'm going to put the equal sign. Let's divide 0 by 2. Well, it's not a no-brainer that it's 0. In fact, you can't really do it because you can't divide by uh, zeros. But I'll just put in 0. My bad. Do it right here. But here what I'll do is say equals 1.63 divided by 2, which, of course, is going to be 0.8 something. Um, but remember, the nice thing about this, again, is that you can then copy this and put it here, and put it here. Actually, I never did these, did I? This one, and this one. Okay. Now, again, the, the formula is area equals pi r squared. So I could put in radius squared here. And I'll just kind of abbreviate there. And how do we get the radius squared? Well, the radius squared, of course, is it's radius times itself. This time I actually can do this. So it equals 0 asterisk times itself. So C19 times C19, which is 0 times 0. And what a surprise, it's 0. Um, I'll justify that in the center again so it looks a little nicer. And I can do the same kind of copy-paste thing. But 
And of course, you can also take that little square there and drag it over, and that does the same thing. And so now we have the radius squared. Now the last thing we need is pi. As you know, pi is 3.14, um, and I can put that in there. There's 3.14. The other thing I can actually do is there's actually a formula for pi. If I put in equals pi and left and right parentheses, it automatically puts in the pi formula. So I can do it either way I want to there. So I will do it both ways. And, whoa, got to get back to where I was. Here we go. And I'm going to put in pi everywhere across here. The reason I'm doing this now is I have pretty much my formulas set. Because remember, area equals pi r squared. So what I'm going to do is put in area here, A-R-E-A. -E and now all you need to multiply is pi r squared. Now the first one we know is going to be 0, but I'm going to do it anyhow. Equals 3.14 times the radius squared, which is 0. And I'll write justify it, or center justify it one last time. And now I'm just going to drag this over. So now I have all the different areas. I have 0, what a surprise, 2, 0 0.07, 0 0.15. Five. And clearly, you can see from the diameter, this was the biggest numbers, and so this one seemed to work well. And now I can go up to my different types of antibiotics. And control, by the way, is just a piece of paper without any type of antibiotic in it. And I'm going to paste this in right here. And now I can actually graph, make my bar graph. And so I just need to kind of highlight that, insert graph. At least I'll try to insert graph. Let's see what's going on here. Do it from this end. Oh, there we go. It just takes a little time to do. And I can do this way, or I can do it this way. And notice it like because the numbers are so small, it kind of shows up as zero. But there really is no. Um, I mean, it's this appropriate graph. So again. Um, you can do either a, I just said bar graph, you could do horizontal or you could do vertical. It, it, they, they're both great. And so that's pretty much it. And hopefully that will help you uh, do this homework and do it pretty quickly, hopefully. Don't forget there's some questions on there too.